Now, what the hell is this all about? Precisely what it says. Your son is not going to receive that award tomorrow. And why not? Because he is not the scientist of the year. Carl Finch developed that theory of molecular activity before he returned to England. Well, I've asked my wife to persuade Neil to confess his plagiarism to the National Science Organization and to decline the award at the luncheon in San Francisco tomorrow. You resent me so much you're willing to destroy my son. Oh, it's you who've destroyed him, Marshal. But not with love. With brow-beating domination. Old work and no play does make Jack a dull boy. One provision we didn't make in this institute was recreational facilities for children. We didn't count on having a boy genius. My secretary tells me that you expressed interest in seeing that movie at the drive-in. Yes, sir, the, the loves of Frankenstein. Well, oh, I can't drive him. Well, she won't take me. It's R-rated. No one under 17 allowed unless accompanied by parent or guardian. Well, perhaps I can persuade Murph to be your guardian. Really? That'd be really neat. Thanks. You punch your card in for overtime, and uh, the movies and the hamburgers are on me, huh? Okay, Doc, thanks. stay in one of the staff cottages. Oh, thank you. I was planning to do that. Oh, uh, this is Lieutenant Colombo. I was just curious whether there was anyone around here that you know of that, uh, might have a motive to do this kind of thing to Professor Nicholson. Whose car is this? Uh, this one checks out to Mr. Ross. That's, uh, Dr. Cahill's assistant. He had an accident? <laughs> no, he didn't have it. Dr. Cahill backed into it last night while it was parked. Anything new on the case? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, there is. I said to myself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a tape record of everything that I think about the case and all the questions that I want to ask. Bad dog. Bad dog. Oh, boy, this is embarrassing. I'm trying to housebreak my dog and nothing seems to work. <laughs> Right. It looks like this pipe has been run over by a car. What are you getting at, Lieutenant? Um... Uh... What if the victim was killed by a car? What if the victim was killed by a car? You yourself said that Professor Nicholson had enemies here at the Institute. Well, yeah, well, the brilliant minds are stockpiled here. You'd like to probe a few of them? Is that what you're asking me? Quite frankly, yes. I would like to see a Mr. Ross. I believe he's your assistant. You know, I checked the log with the garage man. He's got three miles on his car that shouldn't be there. And from here to Nicholson's house, round trip, just about three miles. Well, um, how do you know somebody else didn't take Ross's car? Well, we can't be certain at this point. The reason I asked you to come up to this room was that I figured sooner or later you would get around to asking me where I was on the night of the murder. Why, that's very thoughtful of you, Doctor. I can't imagine how I forgot to ask that question. I was right here. 
operating the K-44. But just about anybody could have sneaked in here last night and grabbed Ross's key off the board. Where were you between 8 and 9 last night? I went to a drive-in movie with a kid. I might as well tell you right now, Lieutenant. I'm a boy genius. Oh. Well, that's good. Double M7, come here and shake hands with the man in the raincoat. Go ahead, shake hands. How do you do? Neil, calm down. There's no need to get upset. The lieutenant can't break this case, and he's grasping at straws. But Daddy thinks I murdered Nicholson. Nonsense. I did have a motive, you know. What are you talking about? That I stole the theory of molecular matter. And did you? I'm sorry, Dad. I know what this must be for you. But it was Carl Finch's work. Finch is dead, so is Nicholson. We'll just keep this thing between us. If it ever got out, it would implicate you in Nicholson's murder. Sorry, Lieutenant. It doesn't compute. That means it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. That's right. Well, thanks anyway, Steve. It was worth a try. I'll tell you what I will do. I'll keep on adding any new evidence you turn up to this docket. Maybe something finally will compute. Meanwhile, I'll keep on resequencing this data. There must be hundreds of possible combinations. I appreciate that, Steve, but I don't want to keep you from your work. That's OK. I'll program Double M7 to do it. That is my work. You mean the robot can operate this computer? There is no way on Earth you can prove that the robot was at the computer that night, let alone that I programmed him to operate it, which is what you suspect, isn't it? I think I'd better have a talk with Margaret. You talk to her as much as you like. But when I come back from Portland tomorrow afternoon, you and I are going to take that vacation in Hawaii. Portland, My name is Kimball. I'm from the Portland Chronicle. We'd like to get a few comments on that story your son broke in Los Angeles earlier tonight. What story? You don't know? I've been on a plane, gentlemen. We understand that your son called the wire services and announced that he'd plagiarized that theory of molecular matter. No comment. What about me? What about the Institute? You've destroyed its credibility. I made it perfectly clear the Institute was blameless. And I was quoted correctly. My resignation ought to help. I don't want to hurt you, you know that. You have. I'm sorry. I'm here to arrest your son for the murder of Professor Nicholson. By your own admission, you canceled your 8 o'clock flight and you came here to talk to Margaret Nicholson. Yeah, that's right. You left her at 10 minutes to 8. You were here on the grounds of the Institute, and the murder took place between 8 and 9. Car number 8. Signed out to Neil Cahill. I had the tires removed from car number 8 and run through our lab. In the tread of one of those tires were some grains of impacted tobacco. Give me that tobacco. This is the same tobacco that Professor Nicholson imported from England. This is the same tobacco that he used in his pipe. The same pipe that was crushed in his driveway by the car that killed him. The same car that you signed out for, the car that you were driving. Where are you employed, Mr. Whitehead? At the Shangri-La Motel in Palm Springs. Do you recognize anybody in this room? That gentleman uh, and the lady that left a minute ago. I've never seen you before in my life. Where have you seen this gentleman and that lady before, Mr. Whitehead? At the motel, sir. On the weekends uh, for the last few months. They check in as man and wife. You fool. Dad, I swear to you, that man is lying! Arrest him and book him. Thank you very much, Mr. Whitehead. Advise him of his rights in the car on the way down. Lieutenant! Right here, doctor. All right, Lieutenant. You win. I did it. Your son doesn't smoke cigars. Father smokes cigars. Father loves his son. The father loves his son. You did it to protect your boy. That's what I was banking on. That's why I staged that scene in there. Just one more thing.